What's good, yo? It's your boy Spiritual Neasy, back with another video brought to you by the Holy Spirit, man. Now in today's video, I'm going to talk about seven biblical ways on how to be delivered from lust, okay? How to overcome that sexual sin and how to stay strong and encouraged and disciplined and consistent on this semen retention journey or for my women out there, how to stay consistent with practicing celibacy and protecting your sexual energy and being purified and made righteous upon our holy almighty God. Okay, so we got to understand that it's a spiritual war going on, whether you're aware or not. It's a battle. It's a fight for your soul every single day until the day that you die. Okay, and the more that you walk after the ways of your flesh, the more that you feed your flesh and do what the flesh wants to do. You live a life that's gratifying the desires of your flesh. The more and more that you're coming into agreement with these demonic spirits, okay? Because we got to remember, bro, it's a spiritual realm around us. It's demonic spirits everywhere you go, demons everywhere. But it's also clean spirits. It's angels everywhere. It's angels that walk with us, especially you children of God, okay? So, but when you walk in the spirit, the more and more you're coming into agreement with God and, and the Holy Spirit, okay? So, getting straight into it. The number one way on how to be delivered from lust is to choose Jesus and deny yourself. Okay? In the book of Matthew, Jesus tells his disciples, if any of you wants to follow me, you must pick up your cross, deny yourself, and follow me. Right. So when you get tempted, you have to make a conscious decision in that moment to choose Jesus, to choose the spirit, and not to choose your flesh. Okay? Because Satan, he wants you to choose your flesh. He wants you to give into the websites. He wants you to masturbate. He wants you to fornicate. He wants you to do all the things that your sinful flesh wants to do. Okay? But see, Jesus, Jesus is calling on you. Jesus wants you to turn away from what your flesh wants to do. Jesus wants you to deny yourself the same way that he denied himself, okay? Because when you deny yourself, you're being more like Jesus. But when you give into your flesh, you're being more like Satan. And the Bible says, whoever you do the things after, that's because they are your father. They are your master, okay? So, you know, when I mean, what I mean by choose Jesus is, you know, when you're tempted, it is, you have a conscious decision on who you're going to choose, you have a conscious decision on what you're going to do. You're not forced to do anything, right? God give us the gift of free will. So you have to use your free will to choose Jesus to, to be delivered from that sexual sin. Okay, and he will give you the strength. He will give you the power, right? In Psalms chapter 97, verse 10, it says, People who love the Lord hate evil. The Lord watches over those who follow him and frees them from the power of the wicked. Right. So this is why I say you got to follow Jesus, because when you follow Jesus, he's going to give you the power to be freed from the wicked. He's going to give you the power to be delivered. and He's going to give you the power to break free from the chains of Satan, the chains of sin wrapped around your neck. OK, so put your faith in Jesus and follow after Jesus. Okay? The second way to be delivered from lust is to value your purpose over pleasure. OK, we got to understand, bro, these are two complete opposites, right? You have your God given purpose on one side and you have fulfilling your pleasure on the other side. Right. So you can't fulfill your pleasure and fulfill your purpose at the same time. No, you can't. That's a lie. If anybody tell you you could do that, it's a lie. Right. Because you might think you fulfilling your purpose, chasing after pleasure, but you're not fulfilling your God given purpose because God is not going to give you a purpose that can be fulfilled chasing after pleasure. Right. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs that a man that seeketh pleasure will be a poor man. Right. So if you're seeking pleasure, you're going to be poor. You're not going to be able to fulfill your purpose. OK. So remember that, you know, it's up to you whether you want to fulfill your purpose or fulfill your pleasure. But you can't choose both. Right. So and understand, bro, the more and more that you choose your purpose, the more and more God is going to reveal it to you. The more and more you run away from pleasure, God is going to reveal why he puts you on this earth. And he's going to exalt you. He's going to make you great, man. I'm telling you, God has done things in my life that I wouldn't even imagine, you know, he could do when I was living in sin, when I was chasing after pleasure. Right. Because it's, it's true. Like I got a testimony, bro. When you're chasing after pleasure, it's like you're not even worried about your purpose. You're just worried about feeling good. Right. But when you're chasing after your purpose, you know, you, you deny you, you um, turning down all them cheap dopamines, all them cheap ways to fulfill your pleasure because it ain't worth it in the end, bro. OK, so the third way to be delivered from lust is to have innocent eyes. OK, so th what I mean by innocent eyes is you have to not let anything wicked come upon you. When you get tempted, you know, when you see something that could tempt you, you know, turn away. You know, don't let yourself dwell on, you know, these, this wickedness, man. Psalm chapter 101 says, I will be careful to live an innocent life. OK, 
When will you come to me? Davis calls to the Lord. I will live an innocent life in my house. I will not look at anything wicked. I hate those who turn against you. They will not be found near me. Okay, so we got to be like David. We got to pay attention and be careful of what we let come in our eyesight. Okay, and a lot of, you know, sometimes you're not going to be able to control it. But, you know, I know for me personally, when I see something tempting, when I see some, you know, lust, lustful things, I instantly like, nope, I scroll away. I'm like, nope, I, not, not today. Not today, Satan. You got to tell Satan not today. Okay, not ever. This is God's world. This ain't Satan's world. Satan don't got control over you unless you let him. Okay, so, you know, submit yourselves to God, humble yourselves and submit yourselves to God. And James says that uh, the devil will flee. So the fourth way to be delivered from lust is to meditate on the scripture. Right. So meditating on the word of God is how you're able to fight back against Satan in the spiritual realm. Right. Because we know that uh, in the book of Galatians, we learn that our sword in the spiritual realm is the word of God. So the moment that you get tempted. Meditate on those scriptures that fight directly against lust, right? 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, flee the evil desires of the youth and pursue righteousness along with those that love God, okay? Then we also have 1 Corinthians chapter 6, where it tells us that the, the um, adulterers, the fornicators, the idolaters, the men that have sex with men, none of these people will inherit the kingdom of God. So that basically says all the adulterers that live in adultery with no repentance are going to hell. OK, so or do you love that sexual sin so much you can't let go of it so bad that you're going to take it with you to hell or are you just going to let it go and go to God so that you can inherit the kingdom of God? Just repent. OK, and also we know that sexual sin is the only sin that we sin against our own body. Right. And we're warned about that in one Corinthians chapter six as well. OK, so uh, also in Joshua chapter one, verse eight, it says, Always remember what is written in the book of the teachings, which is the Bible, it says study it day and night to be sure to obey everything that is written in it. If you do this, you will be wise and successful in everything. OK, so the Bible literally says that when you when you meditate on it and you remember it in them times of temptation and you truly devote your life to living in accordance to the will of God and to how the Bible teaches us to live, then you will be wise and successful in everything that you do. OK, who doesn't want that? Right. But you got to have the strength. You got to have the you know, humility to come before God and submit to him and accept him as your Lord and Savior. OK, so the fifth way to be delivered from lust is to limit room for sin. OK, cut off all distractions. Right. So learn your triggers, learn what triggers you, what makes you fall short and cut it off. Right. It might be Instagram, you know, unfollow all them girls or all them guys that you don't know that, you know, you follow them out of lust, you know, um, TikTok, Snapchat, Twitter, whatever it is, delete the app, take a break, take a fast from it. And, you know, just uh, don't put yourself in settings and environments that can get you to fall short into lust. OK, you know, and when you see people out in public, keep your eyes focused on God. Stay focused in the spiritual room, man. You know, especially at them grocery stores, bro. You know, them grocery stores, there's always somebody there. Man, stay focused, bro. Keep your eyes fixated on God and he will direct your path. He will direct your footsteps and keep you on that path of righteousness. OK, because the more and more that you let your eyes wander and you and you and you start to ponder on women, you start to commit adultery in your heart. Right. Then the more and more you drifting yourself away from God and you getting closer to the devil and you doing what the devil wants you to do. The devil wants you to think about lust. The devil wants you to think about fornicating. Right. So, you know, and it's going to be hard. OK, but you just got to submit yourself to God, man, and devote yourself to Jesus Christ. And he will free you from the power of the wicked. OK, so the sixth way to be delivered from lust is to pray in the exact moment, man, the exact moment that you get tempted. Pray to God. OK, ask God to give you the strength to overcome this temptation. Ask God to provide you a way out of the temptation so that you don't fall short. And just call on God. Talk to God when you're tempted. Tell him, you know, everything. Be transparent with him. Tell him that you can't do it alone. Tell him that you need his strength. And he will be there for you, man, every single time. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 um, says, sorry, verse 12. If you think you are strong, you should be careful not to fall, right? And then it say, the only temptation that has come to you is that which everyone has, right? So you're not being tempted like nobody else has. Right. Remember that. Then it says, 
but you can trust God who will not permit you or he will not allow you to be tempted more than you can stand. But when you are tempted, he will also give you a way to escape so that you will be able to stand it. Right. So you got to understand God doesn't want you to crash out. God doesn't want you to fall short. That's the devil that wants you to do. it. The devil wants to influence you to fall short, to give up, to crash out. Right. But God, he's not going to give you something you can't handle. He's not going to, you know, tempt you more than you can bear because God, he's not going to put you in a compromising situation. Only the devil is going to do that. OK, God will not let anything around you, anything be put in front of you that you cannot overcome, that you are not stronger than. Okay, but you just got to dig deep within and search for Jesus, sit, seek Jesus, and he will give you the strength to overcome that temptation. Okay, and also uh, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19, it says to pray ceaselessly, right? So pray in the moment you are tempted. Pray before you get tempted. Pray after you are tempted and after he's helped you overcome it. Thank God. Always give praise to Jesus. Always give praise to God. Give glory to God. And, you know, the more and more that you talk to God, you thank God, you pray to God, you're developing that relationship. You're getting closer to him. You're building intimacy with him. And the closer you are to God, the harder it's going to be for the devil to get you to fall short. OK, believe me, I, I know of this, OK, because I've been far away from God and now being close to God, the devil, it feels like the devil can't even touch me no more. OK, and I want you all to feel that same way, too. So the seventh way to be delivered from lust is to declare restoration and freedom. Right. Declare your deliverance. OK, speak it out loud. You know, say that you're delivered from lust. Say that you will not succumb to your lustful desires. Say it out loud. You know, speak life. Right. Because in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 says the tongue has the power of life and death and those who love it will eat its fruit. OK, so you have the power of life in your tongue. You have the power of life with your words. So speak life. Don't speak negatively. Don't speak discouraging. Don't discouragement. Speak encouragement for yourself. You know, speak, uh, speak it into existence. You know, tell God that you are, you know, overcoming lust. You're not going to fall short. You're stronger than lust. You're stronger than Satan. Right. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Jesus said he's given us the authority to overcome sin, to step on the head of the serpent. Right. So if Jesus gives us the authority, then you have what you need in order to overcome that sin. You just got to dig deep, man. Dig deep. Don't, you know, don't do what's easy, man. Don't give up. Don't give up so soon, because if you stay steadfast in the faith, you will receive the crown of life. OK. And also uh, Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse four. This says, for the Lord, your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you victory. Right. So we have victory in Christ Jesus. We have victory in God. Don't try to fight the battle yourself. Give the battle to God. And he's going to give you what you need in order to overcome Satan. OK, because Satan, he's not he's weaker than God. Satan is a wannabe. He want to be God. OK, God has already defeated Satan and any other false God in this world. So that's why we always need to cling to God, because the more that we cling to the word, the more that we cling to the scripture. Right. The word is God. So the more that we cling to the Bible, the more that we're clinging to God and the, the, the stronger we're going to become, the more strength we're going to develop because we're getting our strength straight from God. The one that has already overcome this world and every fake God in it. OK, so go to God, man. Every time that you get tempted, just remember God. OK, and remember that God wants you to go the other way. Satan, he wants you to fall short. He wants you to fall into temptation. And when you do, because none of us are perfect and we are going to fall short at times. But when you do fall short, you have to repent. OK, I put a bonus for y'all. Repentance is key. The Bible says that if we don't repent, we are going to perish. If we don't repent, we cannot make it into the kingdom of heaven. OK, that's Luke chapter 13, verse three. So repent when you fall short. And also remember that in Proverbs, it says that a righteous man will fall seven times and get back up. OK, but the wicked will fall into mischief, will fall into calamity and trouble. So the wicked, they're going to fall short and then they're going to continue to stay short. They're going to continue to swim in their sin and live in sin, follow after their flesh. But the righteous, they're going to fall and they feel that heavy conviction and they're going to get back up and start to follow after God how they were before they fell. OK, God is he's faithful and just and forgiving if you confess your sins. So you have to confess your sins before the Lord for him to forgive you. OK, if you made it this far in the video, comment down below. God is faithful, man. So to wrap up the video, seven ways on how to be delivered from lust. Number one, choose Jesus and deny yourself. Number two, 
value purpose over pleasure. Number three, innocent eyes. Okay, so watch what you put in front of your eyes. Number four, meditate on scripture. Number five, limit room for sin or remove distractions. Number six, pray in the exact moment of temptation. And number seven, declare restoration and freedom. Declare your freedom. Declare your deliverance. And because life is in the power of your tongue, freedom is in your words and in Christ Jesus. Okay. So I love y'all so much. If you're feeling led to donate to the ministry, my links down below are in the description. I appreciate anything. Every and anything is very much appreciated. I love y'all so much, man. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button and subscribe. Till next time, it's been your boy Neezy. I love y'all, man. I'm out, bruh. Peace.